Hey, yo, what's up, everybody? It's Coach Shaw back again. Um, we got another special guest. Um, this time, we're going right down the middle of Miami. We're going right to Miami High. Roberto Govea. Tico is what they call him, a head coach at Miami High. Last year, they went 14-10, uh, 15-9. and 9. The year, Their 2022 season, um, having a, expected to have a great year this year for Miami High. So first, before we get to your team and anything, Coach, um, I want to I wanted you to tell everybody about who you are, where you came from. Talk about your ties with high school basketball as far as you being a player, you being a college player. Talk about yourself a little bit. Sure, man. Uh, appreciate for you having me here, man. Uh, um, where, where could I start? Uh, I grew up in New Jersey, man. I'm from West New York, New Jersey, 201 area code right in front of Manhattan, New York. You know, uh, growing up, I grew up in a special, special basketball place, man. Uh, in West New York, we grew up uh, going park to park. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not it's not gyms like, like uh, Florida. It's in the park. The tournaments are in the park with referees, with coaches, everything official, but it was park to park. So growing up in that, man, it was, it was special. Uh, waking up early in the morning, going with my boys and playing in Miller Park by me, and then going to North Bergen and playing 46th Street Park, Gregory Park, and then going uh, just going all over the town, man, all over Jersey. And then uh, once it gets about the afternoon, we we hop on the train or we go down the, the ferry and we go to New York, we go to Manhattan, we go to Lower East Side, we play in West 4, we go to uh, Washington Heights and play in the Peligro Leagues, which is, uh, it was a great experience, man, going to the South Bronx and Hunts Point. Uh, I got cousins there, so I used to grow up playing there in Jerome Ave and then um, in Queens and everywhere, man, all over New York City. It was beautiful, and, and that's how I fell in love with basketball, man. Uh, my, 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 my family is mostly a baseball family, being Cuban and stuff, but growing up where I grew up, basketball was, it's like, I, I try to explain it to people that basketball is life. The, the guy that gets home, he don't go to LA Fitness. Uh, he says hi to his wife and kids. He want to get exercise. He goes to the park and he plays. And the grown-ups to the little kids, tall, small, everybody plays plays basketball. And, and that's kind of how I fell in love with, with the game. Um, I was I was uh, fortunately to be coached by special coaches. Um, uh, when I was a kid, I started off wrong. Uh, my brother and, and my cousins were in a different world and, and I was trying to be cool. I tell people my story. Uh, I graduated eighth grade, 15 years old. I turned 16. Uh, fifth grade, I didn't go to school. I dropped out in fifth grade. I decided I'm not going to school. I'm going to the park. I'm going to hang out with the boys. And I had a, I had a, a coach named Jimmy, some dude from the neighborhood. I was a, a coach, and uh, he believed in me. And that was the spark that got myself together. So I went to high school. I went to a really, really good high school named North Bergen High School. They have uh, – multiple championships, uh, NBA players, a great program. Anderson. Kyle Anderson from there, right? Kyle Anderson's from Kyle there. Anderson. Yeah, yeah, I went to school with his brother. And, um, and um, yeah, man, my, my teammate was like uh, All-State, All-American, all Rick Apodaca. I was the point guard. He was the two. We had a bunch of 6'8 guys, Raul Fernandez, Joey Shapiro, Chris Rojas, people that went to college to play ball. We had an amazing high school team. I transferred to the local school near me called Union City High School. It used to be called Union Hill High School. It's Union City High School. We won a championship there. I went on to college. I had to go to JUCO because my grades, my senior year, I didn't get it right. My, I won a lot of awards my junior and sophomore year. I did, I did my thing. I was doing good. I got kind of I went to another school and I got sidetracked and I ended up in a JUCO, Burton Community College. Uh, before that, my high school coach was a Hall of Famer, John Barone, a uh, special dude. My travel ball coaches were the Hurleys, Bobby Hurley's son, Danny Hurley, coached me, just won the national championship. Uh, they all were around St. Michael's with Steve Ricciardi, and these guys are very, very known up north. 
So I, I was I was lucky to have uh, been uh, coached well at the point guard position. I'm five ten, um, and I was I was a tough kid and just learning the game with these guys. And a lot of people say in New York you learn how to play kind of street ball. You learn your ball handling, but the coaching is in Jersey. You know these guys these guys know what they're doing. And and uh, I was fortunate to be a, you know kind of a student of the game through them. Uh, when I get to JUCO, it, it goes pretty well for me, and I get to go uh, to Montclair State University, a Division III, uh, the best conference in the nation, the NJAC. Uh, I only played a little bit there, and I quit. And I tell people my story. I'm not afraid of saying it. I quit. Uh, I had some situations at home I had to help. Um, my first year at Montclair, I got put in probation. I looked at that paper. If your grades don't go up, uh, you're going to be kicked out of school. Academic uh, probation, right? Not like yeah. Yeah, I started partying and hanging out. You know, college is different. Man. Um, yeah, man, it's way different. My school had 55,000 students, so the basketball games were packed. And um, I promised my grandmother before she passed away my senior year in high school that I was going to finish college. Mm -hmm. So I quit basketball because of that, man. I, I made sure I said I can't, I can't do this. I could just, uh, you know, work and, and go to school, and I did that. It was hard for me to let go. But I knew it was the right thing. And fortunate enough, it was the right thing. Got me my degree. The day after I graduated college, I got in my car and uh, I drove to Miami. I didn't know nothing about Miami. I knew South Beach <laughs> for spring break. I didn't know anything. I didn't know anything. But I came down here. My brother, I was lucky. My brother, um, my brother came out of prison during the same time. And he lived in Little Havana. And I moved here to Little Havana. And I've been here ever since, you know. Uh, you know, I moved around a little bit, but uh, my home was always in Little Havana, man. And and it's funny how the world it's funny how the world works because uh, when I first got here, I used to work out in a basketball court outside. I was fresh out of college. Uh, I went to play in Costa Rica a little bit, a little bit of pro ball, and uh, I was in shape. And they were having open gyms here on Sundays, and they saw me working out one morning. And they said, "Come over to open gym. I will play open gym." And um, Full circle, man. Uh, 17 years later, I get hired here, you know? <laughs> how that works, yeah. Let me ask you this question. Who are the guys who influenced you as a coach to, to get in the game and coach? Um, you know, it's funny. When I, I was never, like, when I quit basketball, I was kind of mad at it. I didn't want to watch basketball. I was like, I didn't, why am I quitting? Like, why? This is all I knew since when I was 10 years old, I was already being on travel teams and traveling the state and, you know, I was young. I, I was pretty good early, so it was hard for me to let go and didn't know what to do, you know, and, and I was kind of mad at basketball. I moved to Miami. I was fortunate enough to get a job at Doral Academy as assistant, uh, as a teacher, because my cousin worked there, kind of put the word in for me, and I got, got hired, and then um, they needed help as a coach. Um, Jared Forbes was the head coach, good guy. Uh, he needed some help. And I got to it, and I started helping and, and putting these guys and organizing them and stuff like that. And and what kind of influenced me at that moment, I was like, man, maybe I stay here for a little while. You know, I got a job now. So mm -hmm. I started calling my old teammates and calling my old coaches, John Barone, September, and asking them about plays and, and mm -hmm. things to run. And that research paper kind of running – learning offense and defense just made me fall in love with the game. And then, you know, it made me fall back in love with the game and as a coach. And I learned a lot, man. And through this journey, I actually, you know, was an assistant coach for like almost 10 years, you know, and I didn't get an opportunity probably because I wasn't from here. It wasn't like, hey, you know, Tico, the neighborhood guy from this high school, nobody knew me. Mm -hmm. So it took a while and I was an assistant coach for Nolan at Miami Springs after that. Uh, we coached. Uh, uh, I was uh, honored to coach T.Y. Hilton. People don't know that T.Y. Hilton lifted weights with us at 5:30 in the morning, and I would work on dribble drills. This kid was a maniac, and he loved basketball. He was all state in basketball. People forget. Yeah, that. I didn't. I never forget. I know he was really yeah. good. Yeah. And then, and then from there, I, I, you know, I learned from Nolan. Nolan was a good coach. He's actually an assistant now, Sage Mom. Yeah. And then. There I went and I was an assistant coach at uh, with, with Chachi at Coral Reef. We win the state championship. It's actually the last public school to win a state championship. 
in uh, in Miami, 2009, I believe. And then from there, I become a head coach at Southridge. Do one year, they get rid of me because they wanted their boy there. And then I was back. What am I doing? I don't want to coach anymore. And uh, I was fortunate enough to get a chance at, at North Miami. And the rest is history. But before that, all these coaches I was an assistant for, I learned a lot from them. And, and uh, I got a little bit of everybody and it molded me. So influence, it was kind of the, you know, um, my motivation in trying to get my own job as a head coach and stuff like that. So it's a little bit of everybody. Well, I know we had some battles there. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, we did. And, man, we had some real, real fun battles, man. Yeah. Uh, you got a lot. Like I don't know what the record was. I can't tell you. I'm old, but uh, I think I think I got uh, you. I got you after Zach left. <laughs> yeah, you got me after Zach left, and then uh, I think I got you one time. I think I got you one time at home. That was that was a good win because um, that team we had was nowhere near as talented yeah. as your team. But um, yeah. but you guys had a lot multiple Division One players, and we wound up squeaking one out at home. But then when we went back to your house, it was like, okay. <laughs> now nah, it was fun, man. You know, that's just out. some of the best times of my life, man, in North Miami. Um, you're talking about a town that let me in, bro. You know, it's a majority Haitian community. Yeah. And um, I mean, I'm from New Jersey and Cuban and a bunch of different mix. Nobody, nobody looked at me different, man. Nobody looked at me different. They let me in right away. Uh, right away, we got to it, man. We we started working out. A lot of these kids learn basketball late. You know, I always say um, in the future, the second, third generation of, of those kids is going to be a problem for the rest of Miami, you know. But um, it was beautiful, man, to see these kids grow. Everybody was – it was a real family. We would do a camp there. We had 250 kids and big brothers and uncles and cousins and – it was beautiful, and a lot of these kids went to college, man. We, you know, we were fortunate enough to help about 11, 12 kids to college to play ball. You know, um, uh, two of them went Division One. Perry Francois went to Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Ralph the Saint went to uh, um, Central Michigan. But we had a, a plethora of other kids that were, you know, those kids they they got bigger in college. In high school, they were decent players. But they just stuck with it, man. Stuck with it. Easy to coach kids, man. And we had two kids frost net when I first got there. We battling with Zach and them. And then it, it came over to Alex Florentine and them, those kids. And then at the end, we had a nice special group. Uh, the five of starters all went to college. Marvin and and um, Ralph, Bryant, Perry, and uh, Sure Game, and a lot of them, man. It was a, it was a very special time, actually energize me about you know being a coach and stuff so it was a good time since since they had they embraced you so well let's talk about you know what i'm saying over there in north miami let's talk about uh your administration at miami high yeah. and fan base talk to me about um what the athletic director what the fan base what the principals how yeah. are they accepting you and your role as a head coach i'll tell you what they're amazing man that means, and this school is different, man. This school is different. we need to name names too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, every, every school is special, you know. Um, every every school is special, but uh, coming here, look, you know, some people think that I came here for for one reason or another. Um, it, it's very easy, man. These people love basketball, and uh, the principal here, Benny Valdez, is a special dude, man. He's a basketball player. He played here. Won state championships as a point guard with a an amazing team led by Doug Edwards and and uh, Jose Ramos and these guys are all American man all American not <laughs> all American and uh, they started this thing in the in '89 I believe kind of started '87 '89 was their first chip after like 30 years and um, you're going from the '40s and '50s that the school this school was you know uh, a different school let's say. And then when the 80s is a different type of kids in this school. And uh, Benny Valdez was part of that. And the athletic director, Leonard Graham, was part of that. They were both part of that team that started the, the foundation of the legacy here in the school. That they won, um, you know, nine state championships after that. And these guys know uh, hard work. 
determination in the classroom too, man. And um, it's amazing. This, the, the principal, Benny Valdez, does an amazing job. This school is, it was an A school last year. You know, it's a BA school. He doesn't, he doesn't allow these kids from the street take over the school, gives them a chance. He's caring to them. And then there's no O's bar, man. You got to go, you know, if you're, if you're not part of this. And um, it's a tradition and it's, it's an excitement of being in school, being in this, this school is amazing, man. It's, it's like a college. It's about 3000 kids. Um, and uh, he, there's, there's um, pep rallies all the time. Um, by the way, besides the, the principal and the athletic director does an amazing, amazing job himself, Leonard Graham, he uplifts all these kids. They both walking around the hallways, talking to the kids, talking to coaches. You know, it's easy to spot them. They, they, they know the kids by first names. They put them in tutoring. You know, they don't play with tutoring. They, they make them go. The kids, they enjoy it. They challenge them uh, in the classroom. They challenge them you know, on the court. It's a special school uh, led by these two special men. Other guys are involved. The activities director is great. Like I said, they do pep rallies. Uh, we bring out the band for the games. It feels like you're in a college environment when you come and play here. You could ask the teams we play against. It's, it's a little different. You know, the kid, te- uh, the fans are involved. Uh, the fans, besides our, our kids, are amazing. We get this full we get the gym full, rocking. It could be a game that's not really relevant, and it's full. The band is full. The cheerleaders, the dancers, the, the you know, all of them, man. They're they're heavily involved. It's a really good time. It's it's a family environment, and uh, with three thousand kids, it's, it seems hard, but it's actually pretty easy. It seems like almost you could say like a private school. I dare to say, you know, in a in a public spectrum, you know, and um. It's it's a beautiful time to to uh, be a coach here, man. And and like I was I was gonna say before, it was easy for me to come over here. Besides the legacy, uh, uh, people you know want to be a piece of this to jump on a bandwagon or something. Not for me, man. Growing up in New Jersey, uh, I used to come here on vacation a lot. Mm-hmm. And like I said, my family lives in Little Havana, and I would come to the games and watch them and knew a little bit and. You know, someone that speaks Spanish like me is, is from Cuban descent. These men uh, won state championships, man, and 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 formed a brotherhood. And and I always say the closest thing to like Jersey, is Little mm-hmm. Havana, and you could say maybe Hialeah, you know. Uh, and uh, it was easy. and not only that, man. I, I live a few blocks away from the the school. My wife went to school here, graduated here. My my uncles and cousins, like I said, some oh, of my. Man. Yeah, man, and I never heard, I never ended. They always used to let me know about it, you know? So it was something in my ear. And then when the opportunity came, like I said, it was pretty simple, man. My family, I take my wife and kids to church here. We go to supermarkets here. You know, this is my this is my home now, man. And, and I was fortunate enough. I actually didn't think I was going to get the job, man. I actually didn't think I wasn't even going to be approached by it. Like, I had a chance. I said, let me throw my name in the hat. You know, the good, good, good God is good. I prayed and, and uh, I was fortunate enough to get this. And, and now I'm excited to where we're going with it, too. You know, speaking on that, how, how good was your time at Cole Gable? An amazing time, man. And, and the, the actually the administration was great there, too. Uh, uh, Acosta and Romero and, and these guys and, and, and Mr. Evans was the as, uh, assistant principal. These guys helped me, challenged me. Uh, they were on my side all the time. They were good people, man. It was easy. I, uh, so I, I I leave North Miami, which wasn't easy to go to Core Gables, and um, it was it was a great transition getting there. We, Chachi, uh, coincidence of the world, man. He didn't he didn't hook me up with a job or nothing. He was leaving and I was coming, and and uh, you know he he left a couple seniors there for me to get my feet wet the first year, and I did, and we had a good. A good team. Uh, we had uh, Kelvin Morley was man probably would have been player of the year if it wasn't for Zach in South Miami. But Kelvin Morley was a, a huge. The kid Nuke uh, William Blett was an animal. Uh, he went to play college ball, and then we had other guys. Little Jesus Acosta came over, um, and we had a, we had a great team, man. We had a great team that first year. 
Then we moved on. We went second year. We had a kid named Chino and Manny Torres and Nate Walker. And that group we had it was amazing. We had uh, people used to look at me. I was crazy. I started four guys shorter than me. And, uh, but we, yeah, it was the only year I won 20 games out of 23 that year, you know. And uh, it was on our defense, tough little guys. Chris Brown was part of that team, which was was my assistant coach now here at Miami High, Chris Brown. Went to Manhattanville, and we had an amazing time. And then our last two years there, we had, I think, the best team in Miami, uh, probably the best team in South Florida, uh, with with guys that grew up in our system, from young kids to grow up, uh, Karan Bryant. uh, We had Romolo Delgado, uh, Desmond Romer, Desmond Romer. Oh. My Harold Player of the Year was an. You should have made him that year, but you you changed the rule on him. Yeah, listen. I know you get it. I know you get it, but it's all good. Man. I was working. I'm still working on my stuff. You know what I'm saying? I was working on my stuff at the time. No, I had to throw a jab. It's all right. <laughs> hey, I, I I tried to recruit him at uh, when I was at Florida Memorial. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah, he's an amazing he, player, man. He, he, he was high on our list. He was probably. He was going to come in and be our starting point guard at the time when we were yeah. going to go to Memorial. But, yeah. uh, he wanted yeah. to not win or whatever. You know what I'm saying? I wish him we, had, we had a great team that last year. And then we had Jamil, um, Jamil's uh, junior year. And uh, he left in our senior year. And, and that, though all those kids got, became seniors. And we had guys that were in the program all four years. Ronald and Rockney and Jonathan Similian. And these guys fit perfectly. Bubba, uh, Coach Molina's son. And that that senior year for these guys, um, we didn't lose a game, bro. We we won. I think we lost two, three games that year as well. It was COVID year, no fans, it was amazing, man. Uh my my um my wife was pregnant and these kids held it down, man. They went to parks and practiced without me, running drills, put me on a Zoom and we'll be like coach like this. And it was an amazing they would come over and leave pampers at the door. Man, these kids were special to me, man. And and that year we won the GMAC. We swept, you know, we beat everybody by a lot, by a lot of points. We didn't just win it. We won, you know, convincingly, and we won the district convincingly. Um, by 20, 25 points, all the games, all the games, district, GMAC. We get into the regional, and um, it was unfortunate. Uh, the other team had COVID, and uh got a little political, got to the news. I don't know if you remember that. And we came out on the news and I was oh, just- Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I was trying to keep away, but it got all over the place. And it was unfortunate that a public school had to, uh, not couldn't continue to play and represent Miami and a private school uh, could continue. And um, it was an ugly thing, man. It was ugly, I don't like it. And, um, but, uh, it's all right, man. Everything happens for a reason. Um, those kids are still my little brothers. We're still family. We still talk all the time. A lot of those guys and myself and the North Miami kids, a lot of our guys, man, we we work real hard, but that's why we're so close, you know, and I don't disrespect anybody. I don't put my hands on anybody. I keep a distance. You're mad at me. I kind of walk away and that's kind of be my MO because I was a player that turned into a coach. So I used to be like that as a kid. I was a tough little kid that I didn't like people talking to me funny, so I'm like that as a coach now. So Gables was an amazing, an amazing journey, and um, and uh, you know it, it it propelled me, it propelled me to here, and we sent a a bunch of kids to college there, and you know people say, oh D three, they went D three or NAIA, man. Listen, I'm in the business to get my boys to ed- to be educated. I went D three, and uh, I live pretty good. I have. I have, I have a few things under my name uh, that I wouldn't have if I didn't go to college. And I know these young men are, are going to have the same or more. But they're going to have more. Uh, Chris Brown was is my assistant coach. He just left actually. He just left us, and he's moving to Chicago because he got a. Uh, he's going to be a, a an engineer, bro. You know, uh, and this guy's going to make a lot of money and do great. D three went to Manhattanville. Uh, oh, so I'm not in the D1, D2, that's up to them and their families. I try to get the coaches to watch, you know, and and um, and I think we did a decent job at Gables doing that as well, you know. 
Let me ask you this question though. I got I gotta start ask shout out to Coral Gables coach Shun over there. Another thing, yeah, you know, good job. Respect to him. He's doing a really good job over there. Got 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 a nice little team. But I, I gotta ask you the questions that you don't want to answer. So, Go ahead. Go ahead. Who who's your who's the best player that you ever coached? Oh shit. Ever. Ever. Oh, man. People are going to be mad at me for this one, man. I mean, look, North Miami, uh, you know, like I said, a lot of these guys grew better in college because their bodies grew. They learned a little bit more because they were learning late, I would think. Uh, I had Frost that seen it was a monster, 6'7", strong as hell, could dribble a ball, and and, uh, and Perry and, and Brian, uh, Ralph and Brian. Uh, but Gables... Uh, Black Nuke and then Chino and like I said, these guys. But I mean, Karan and Dez, really, Karan and Dez. You could choose it any way. Karan, as a freshman, his development was it was amazing. People don't understand the relationship I got with this boy, man. Uh, we used to go to park. We used to go to parking lots and just drill parking lot, no basketball court, parking lots, and I would drill him for hours. And he was just witty, and I saw his development from. Freshman year, he's just a big man putting the ball in the rack. Sophomore year, he could put it uh, on the floor a little bit and, and could post up and make some moves. Junior year, he's my point guard, man. He's a point guard. He's bringing the ball up. He's hitting threes. And then his senior year, he came over to Miami High with me and kind of got sidetracked a little bit. Uh, but he was my point guard. He was my point guard. Anybody that come watch this play. So his development was amazing. Uh, Desmond Romer. Um, he's just a special kid, man. He, he, he would tell me, coach, he would look at me and tell me, you ready right now to win? Like, that's confidence, man. And he would turn around and he would have four points and end up with 30 and win the game. And he would hit a three from half court and then take you to the hole and jelly you. Uh, mid, and then his development of his mid-range, uh, everybody that knows me kind of knows that I'm a stickler of uh, – mid-range jumpers uh, because when I was a kid I could dribble the ball really good I was known for that uh, ball handling was my thing and uh, I knew that when I get to the to the hole big man 610 it's not so easy anymore mm -hmm. so I learned how to pull up uh, and uh, that's how I got recruited you know and got looked at and I noticed that and now as a grown-up I teach that like crazy today but you know you know, you asked me that question, and it's still not over, because I got some guys right now that are really good. And so, so before we get best to, I've ever had. Before we get to the, to the player, let's talk about your schedule this year, because. Oh. And when I do my put my team rankings every Sunday, and I go over with my group of guys, oh. we always come back to Miami High. Like Miami High is really good, but they haven't won any signature game. Mm. last year mm. this year i think it's probably going to be one of your better teams yeah. because well, yeah. i didn't see you guys play let me talk my let me talk my my crap my crap right now i can watch you guys play and not only as i always say this too uh, every year i think you have, you get better as a coach appreciate that man and i feel like when watching on silent, I was watching the FIU camp. I'm watching, and people don't realize this, but coaches don't realize this. But 90% of the time, I'm watching the coach to see what they're doing and how they're using their kids. That's how I know who's yeah. good. Yeah. And you got a relationship with your kid that I believe yeah. can be enhanced in the game, enhance yeah. their games on the court. And I think this is going to be a better year. This is my prediction. You were 14 and 10 last year. Okay. I got you. Uh, I got you winning twenty-two games this year. <laughs> I got you winning. So, 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 talk about your schedule. Talk about your schedule, and then we'll get to all of that. Well, first, I want to say that the first year I was here, it was pretty wild. When I get here, there was one kid on the varsity team. Zero kids on JV. Zero kids on varsity. For whatever reason, that's none of my business. My business is to coach. So. Mm -hmm. We, we formed the team, we developed, um, 
it was a kind of one one year. Let's get this team, let's get this back on the map. Let's get it going. Okay, it was a great job. A, a great job for the team. How they in one year could, and we did good. We went to uh, regional semis or whatever it was. We lost to the team that won the state championship, Columbus. Um, we got to the district championship. We lost to the team that won the state championship, Columbus. Uh, so it was a decent year, man. We got to the GMAC, whatever. Second year, I decided, I, well, we decided as a coaching staff to um, let's develop. Let's develop. So we could have gotten some different pieces, and I said no. So we, we decided let's, let's keep it homegrown with these guys, with these freshmen. So I had a few freshmen play there my first year here. And they were just getting their feet wet. A sophomore year, there we had some good players. We had Josh Middlebrooks was an amazing uh, baller, um, and um, I get a little bit uh, I just lose train of thought with Josh because this is a kid that we grew a relationship with. Right now, he's at Miami Dade. He should be going D one uh, or D two soon. Uh, but um, we had other kids, Edwin. Um, uh, and, and a few other seniors that were involved in that group. But the young guys were playing most of the games. And, um, you know, the exception of the last two playoff games, it wasn't bad. I mean, we were 14 and 8. Not bad. We lose to Columbus, the ones that win the state championship twice. So, I mean, it happens, you know. So, but it was, I look at it like a developing year uh, with these guys that see how far they could take us, Josh and them. And Josh, poor kid, he was hurt most of the season. We thought we were going to lose him with an ACL. And he and our assistant coach, Coach Abril, does an amazing job with these boys and getting them ready. And I don't try to push him because I see the big picture ahead. And he got through it. Thank God he didn't tear his ACL. But we developed a lot of these young guys. Now they're back this year. They're all back. Um, it's a lot easier now to coach. They know me. I know them. And a lot of those losses were, if you look, go look at the schedule, they were close losses. Uh, we played Cypress Bay. We go to overtime, we lose by one point. Norland, we go double overtime, lose by one point. Um, I, I mean, shit, even Columbus, you know, uh, we held them at bay. They're, they're, uh, they're a really good team. Mm -hmm. At the end, I, I feel like the next game, the next day they, they play the game, they lose. I think we opened up a little can there maybe. Uh, of uh, making them play a little harder, and then the next game they lose the game. I don't know. Maybe it could be, maybe not. But it doesn't matter. My point is, our guys were being developed during this during this time, um, and we got these guys back. Uh, if you don't mind me mentioning the names and talking about them a little bit, you know, uh, we have a kid named Romari Robinson. Romari Robinson has been offered by uh, Florida State University, Florida Gulf Coast University, Old Dominion University, UMass University. FIU, FAU. I'm not trying to gloat, but no, this you, 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 really you. hard. You have to. This is you work yeah. for. And it's all first in interest, but this kid works hard, man. He works hard. He's a special kid. He's mm -hmm. a really good kid. Um, uh, very good uh, family uh, on his side. He, like I said, he works hard. No complaints. Uh, he's gained about 35 pounds with uh, our assistant coach Abril. This guy really stronger, shoulders bigger, that pull-up jumper. You're going to see it. People are going to recognize it this year. So we've been all over team camps this summer. We went to uh, Wake Forest University uh, in North Carolina, and he, he, did a, he did a good job, man, and sprained his ankle a little bit and came off, but our team held it down. We have a kid uh, Absalon Cortez. Yeah, that's what, that's the kid I was talking. I, I I had did a little blog about it. What's his name? How you say his name? A, we call him AJ. AJ okay. Cortez. AJ, you saw him at FIU. Dropped thirty on Howard Prep. I've so, seen him more than once, but I but um the, the every time I see him, he, he's a shooter, spot up. But yep. this particular time, yep, he's developing. He was he's way different yep. than what I've seen him before because I always was like, man, this kid's handling the ball yep. uh, really well. He's controlling the tempo of the game, dropping yep. the ball, and he's scoring and he can shoot it. He can shoot yep. the ball. Just, just yep. So I really like the way he 
did his the way he was a floor general that that uh that day. Yep. And I commended him before I said, yo, he's getting better. But it's, it takes I real quick with thank you. Yep. Out, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Ooh, I mean, on. he's 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 now he's growing into him. It's not a spot of shooter, he's a point guard. And um he comes in and he, yeah, and I challenge him on defense and and I challenge him, man. I'm, I'm a little tough with him on defense because, you know, I'm more defense-oriented. And he's an offensive kid. But now he's changed. He's changed his ways. I don't say changed. I don't like saying change. He's developing his ways. And um, he's coming He's, he's coming to his own, man. People better watch out. You know, uh, he's tough. He just needs to be a little bit more consistent this season. Last season, he had big games but wasn't consistent. This season, I, I see him being more consistent. He could, like I said, he could dribble the ball. He, he's tough on defense now. And and if you fall asleep on him, like I said, that day you went to watch him at FIU, he 30 points on North Broward Prep, a really good team. And um, and uh, he's coming to his own. And then him and Roe have this little connection going on year two, you know, full year because we play all summer. Um, they're doing their thing, man. And we have another kid named Aaron Richards, man, six seven kid. I mean, he he's – they love him. UMass loves him. Old Dominion loves him. FIU loved him. He he is a kid that you don't he's not on people's radar, but he's six seven coach. And he has a jump shot. He can shoot threes. He he plays good defense. Um tough as an ox. He puts up two plates ten times. He's strong as a he's strong as hell, man. Um the he's, big boy. he's a big boy. And he's learning how to be smooth. He's growing into, you know, a lot of these big kids early, they're kind of flat-footed, and it takes time. But I do a lot of dribbling, a lot of skill work, and a lot of lifting weights. And this kid is slimmed down. He's lost like 20 pounds, and he's bringing the ball up at times. And um, he got it, man. He's shooting that short jumper. He reminds me a lot, actually, of a Karan Bryant, man. But the, the difference is, you know, he's 6'7". He's 6'7". Yeah. Coach, you know, and maybe you don't have it on the string like Karan did, but he's getting better at it. And um, and we got another kid named Joseph Jean, man. Joseph Jean's about six five, came over from Keys Gate, mm -hmm. um, could put it on the floor, rebound, tough. And then we got developing pieces. Uh Gabo Gabriel Fernandez is he had a great summer for us, man. He's a he's like a point guard, he's about six foot. We have a kid named Ronald, Ronald um he came over, he's 6'8", coach, and he's an animal. He blocks, he rebounds. That same game, you watched him against No Broward Prep, big guys. And uh, um, what's the other county, uh, their prep school, they had one too. He had 17 rebounds on them, coach, against two 6'8 kids. He's doing great. He's developing. Uh, he's developing into his own. So we got some size. What, what got, class is by he the in? way, they're all 20-25. Oh, okay. All of them. The only one that's not is Gabo. Uh, he's a senior. He's 2024. The whole team is 2025, coach. Uh, so I get him for another. And they were they were there last year. Like I said, we got our developing in. I think and we were in close games, and they're kind of now. I see them getting a little bit ahead of these games. And this year, they're all juniors, 11th grade, and and it's going to be a special piece. A lot of we got a lot of college coaches coming in here. For the obvious, Romari, because he's like, coach, he's 100 miles per hour. Yeah. Now now he's 100 miles per hour and stopping, pulling up and kicking. And 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 he his defense is, his wingspan is like a seven-footer, coach. And he's, and Romari's a great kid and he's developing and he's learning and he's coming, he's coming into his own, man. And I, I hope, I hope that uh, you and other people could see his development and he could represent Miami. And if you don't mind me going off the cusp a little bit about him. Talk, talk. Um, um, I see you uh, rankings. I'm not crazy on rankings, but this is good. This is a good challenge for this kid. And he sees it and then, you know, quietly, we don't, we don't, you know, we don't hack about it. You know, we don't talk about it, but you know, it's a challenge for him because I look at a lot of those kids you have on a list or, they're all private school kids, coach. And I love the private school. I love it. I I, I commend it, man. That's I understand everybody wants to send their kid to, to do better in life and go to a private school or a charter school. Um, but we're a public school. 
and I love to represent my my type of kids because I went to a public school. Um, and um, he's representing you, Coach. He's representing all the kids in the park right now. He's representing Miami, Florida. Um, a lot of these other kids, they, they, they have the, I don't know, the, they have the help to get places and be seen. This kid is doing it the old school way by working. Uh, I know Miami High is not no little bugging in the, you know, anywhere, but putting on that jersey, now you have a bunch of thousands of our county kids <laughs> that came here, you know, hundreds of all state players and probably hundreds of all Americans, mm -hmm. not, maybe not hundreds, but close to, and he's putting on that jersey and he's, he's, he loves the challenge. He represents it. He meets all these guys. He met them, most of them. Um, and he has his chin up and he's ready for the challenge. And him being a public school kid at Miami, I, I don't want to disrespect anybody, but I see a lot of private and charter kids on the top of a list. And I see the only public school really is us in Northern. Um, maybe South Ridge. Uh, I wouldn't, you know. And I mean, other schools have their years, you know, they have it, but I think Romari is, is above these guys and above a lot of these players and, and he's doing it the old school way through a public school. A lot of places you don't see that anymore, you know, and, and our team, not only Romari and AJ, Aaron, Joseph, Ronald and Gobble and these guys are coming up and we got developing pieces from our JV team that are coming up and developing. But I just wanted to tell you that, that Romari is a special kid. And I hope you have your eye on him because he's doing it. He's doing it the, the right way. And he should be commended by it. And he's a great student. He's a 3.2 GPA. Um, the bell rings, he's running to class. A lot of kids, they're too cool. They're you know, swaying to class. He's running to class. He's getting his work done. Uh, study hall, he has his head down in his books. He's finished first. He goes over to a teammate, yo, you need help? Boom. You know, it's a special kid. And I, I just wanted to wanted to let you know that. Not only him, like I said, all these guys, you know, they're doing it in a in an old school manner, you know, and we, we're we're excited about it. I'm excited to see him play this year. I know he's a point forward. Maybe you got him at point guard. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I, I know. I don't know how you do, but he's six seven. Probably gonna be six nine when he gets done. Um, definitely half uh, Division One talent and professional. He he, he yeah. can professional with potential. Yeah. So I really like what he's doing. Um, I really respect what he's doing, and I respect what you're doing with him. So, um, but I do got to ask you a couple questions though. All right, questions that I got to ask everybody. Go ahead. Boom. There you go. I need your top seven players in Miami, starting from number one. I'm writing it down. Okay. Number one? Yeah. Easy. Romari Robinson. Okay. Number two? Okay. I got to think a little bit. You know I'm going to put my top player, my, all my players, but I, I would uh, I would say um, uh, Cameron Boozer. Okay. That's a big one, right? Yeah. Okay. I will put number three, Dante um Dante um Allen Dante Allen sorry yep. Dante Allen you know and then um um I would put um Marcus Marcus Allen from Northern what Marcus. number what number where at coach huh what number where we have four we have four uh I will put five okay uh, I will put five. I will put five. My kid, AJ Cortez. AJ Cortez. Yep. I will put six. Uh, Reed, Matter Lakes, Christian Reed. Okay. And I'll put seven. I'm gonna say my kid again, Aaron Richards. Okay. Am I missing any? No, nah, there's seven right there. I got your top seven today, County. That's your opinion, your opinion on me. You know what I mean? Um, uh, love it. I got one more question for you. We can get out of here. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to wait for you. I got one more question for you. Oh. You know what this question is? Tell me. 
Fans out. Who are your top seven teams in Miami? Okay. Ready? Yep. You and I both know the top five. I need you to tell me. All right. I haven't done anything, so I don't – I'm not one of them. Okay. Oh, I will, okay. I will be. <laughs> no, I am. All right. So I would put, of course, Columbus first. I would put Riviera second. I put Norland third. I put Matter Lakes fourth. I put Miami High fifth. Okay. I'll, you need, I'll, you need two more. I'll put six um, South. Uh, you know what? No. I'll put six Divine Savior, and I'll put seven South Ridge. You know who's good too? I like South Ridge too. I like I like your seven. I do. Yeah, and you know you know what's wild about this? Me telling you this list. Um, I think the top dog is Columbus. Uh -huh. And I think the other six teams on good nights could beat each other. I think to beat Columbus, you got to have a almost close to perfect game, a really good game. Uh -huh. I think the other teams, nobody's a bad coach. Nobody's a bad team. You have a good night, you win the game. I don't think anybody's so much higher than the other. I really I really feel that way, you know, about the county, you know? Yeah, well, and that goes for, I'm sorry. That goes for the players, too. You could change on a good night. Any of those seven players could have a better night than the other guy, you know, with top dog being Cameron Boozer, Columbus being the top, and then the other six could have big nights and beat each other. I really feel that way. Let me ask you, uh, uh, how many of these teams are you playing in that top seven? How many are we playing? Yeah. Uh, two, three. Uh, we're playing four of them. We don't play Riviera. We're, we're hosting a tournament. We might play them in our tournament. And we don't play uh, uh, Divine Saviors in our tournament as well. We might play both of them in our tournament. And we don't play. Um... No, that's it. Um, Columbus. Uh, they didn't want to play us this season in regular season. Um, because they want to be uh, national, uh, yeah. they'll come. They'll come down from that horse one day. But I don't uh, know, man. like I talk to them. I, a lot. I understand that though. But we we'll, we'll hope we hope to see them in the to get to state, man. You know. Yeah, I think that's probably the reason. But um, I can I can guarantee you, I have personal phone calls with the people over there, even um, mainly the head coach. Uh, but I wouldn't play us either, coach. We'll see them in district. So right. that's how. That goes. So yeah, yeah, it makes sense. I would but do the same. They they want to play more Miami teams. They want to play home. They don't know the traveling. How much traveling? What else can they do? You know what I mean? They, yeah. they got the, the the thing going on this weekend. The um, the Latitude uh, Basketball Classic that's happened in Miami Beach in high school. They and that. So um, it's it's uh they they play a lot of teams, man. Like they, they will play home more than they would probably on the road. But right now they're high demand. Well, they should um play in our holiday tournament. Um, if you don't mind, I want to plug this in. Look at the teams we got, Coach. Look at this. Look at this. Talk about it. Look at these teams. Look at these teams. Oh, yeah, we need that. Let me see. Coach, can I get that? Can you send me that so I can put that yeah. out there? Look at these teams, Coach. These are national ranked teams, Coach. Coach, look at these teams. Uh, we got Rose Catholic versus Riviera, Wakiva, Eagles Land, and Life Center Academy. That's where Deion Waiters went. Word of God, that's where John Wall went. They're one of the best teams in the country. Um, Calvary Christian, Moravian Prep with the with the with the Eli's brothers, St. Peter's, uh, Gulliver, Drew Charter in Georgia, Martin County's always good. Divine Savior, Bergen Catholic, Bergen Catholic coach. They come into town with Copeland. You might go to Georgetown or, or Syracuse. Tampa Catholic. These are good teams, coach. You know, Our, we should yeah, be. I'm gonna, I'm gonna we, be sitting uh, here. Uh, yeah. Columbus should be in there too, though. <laughs> Tell Columbus to pull up. Yeah, I know. Nah, I'm cool. But we're having this holiday tournament, man. And we're doing it here at Miami High. Last year we did it. It was an amazing, amazing tournament. Uh, we did a showcase last year. It was an amazing showcase. We retired Udonis Haslam's jersey during our game. Yeah, I was there. Uh, yeah, well, there you go. That's one game that we, we won that was pretty good last year, Miami Country Day. Mm -hmm. Our country was pretty good last year. It was pretty good. All right. So <laughs> there's one. I'll think of others while we go. But um, we had it last year. The whole Miami Heat were here. 
Uh, from Jimmy Butler to all these guys were here. It was a it was a good showing. We tried as yeah, and it was good games, really good games. And then now this year we we hope to do the same, but we're gonna do a tournament based uh, uh, showcase, and and we're excited for it, man. There's some good teams gonna be. I hope you're here for that too, coach. Yeah, I'm gonna be in town. I'm definitely gonna be in town for a lot of stuff that we got going on this um this this winter. I want to I want to check out a lot of high school basketball. And plus, I am putting on my own tournament, 2000 not this season but the next year. Um, and I'm looking some pretty prestigious teams. Hopefully, so hopefully yeah. we can we can get that on the way. I'm, I'm excited to do more events around to the the community. We need, we need it. Based towards our kids and to not just Miami kids, Broward kids, South Florida kids, but mainly the. To, to I don't agree break. with that. I don't agree with that part. <laughs> oh, you don't want to, no, I don't, no. And I want to tell you, hey, now I got a question for you. Huh. You know where I'm going with this. Mm-hmm. But you're my dog. And don't forget, a lot of people don't know this. I know you from when I moved out here and I was playing in a men's league. And Jose mm-hmm. Martin, I was living in Brico as a single young man. And you were too. <laughs> And we used to look, go at it, and we used to know each other before you even started coaching, and myself too. But I think, and I a little critique too. I think Broward is okay, and we need you more home in Miami because I know there's good talent in Broward and all that. And and what's the other county above? Um, West Palm. West Palm. They got players. They do a good job. I and mean, I'll tell you how good they do a good job, uh, how great of a job they do. When we go out there, we know. We know. They all help, they all helping each other with everything. And we're the outsider coming in Miami. Anybody that's from Miami that gone up there with a tournament or something, had a great time, a great hospitality, but they, they're very helpful to each other. They help each other. They really do. They do a great job at it helping each other get recruited, helping each other get into tournaments, all this, they do a great job. Mm-hmm. I think in Miami, we don't do such a great job. I think in Miami, those seven teams we both named should be more marketed. Those players should be more marketed so that the other kids and the other teams under them could be taking a, advantage of that. And I think, I think I know your name. It's called Miami Day BB, Miami mm-hmm. Day. So when you see, I want you to know this because a lot of my friends feel the same way. But we boys, and I'll never, I'll never <laughs> tell you. I think you do an amazing job for our guys. Yeah. I really do. I commend you. I always tell you, man. Like we need three of you, you know, so that we could get more on the ball. But I, I think they don't need help, coach. I think we need more help. And really? I think that that I think you, you do a great job. And then then we see these other guys, and we're like, oh man. I think that that could have took away from from another kid from Miami. I'm always going to be a, a um, I'm always going to tell you Miami first. Mm-hmm. I love this city. I've been adopted to the city in 05 ever since. I love this place. My 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 kids are growing up here. My wife is from here. All this stuff, and I think you were in the same roller coaster. You came down here. You've been adopted by this city as well. Mm-hmm. And we love this city together. It's home for us. And I, I just want to throw that jab at you that you know Thank you. I appreciate it. So so let, let me uh let me a little hit you a little rebuttal. <laughs> so I do cover Miami. I know you do. You do, you do. And, you do. And, um, but at the same time though, I have other people, Coach Anthony Davis. Um he covers Broward. Mm. Yeah, I, don't, I know. I don't, I don't know. Years to get left off. West, bon- West Palm Beach, Coach Frank from um, Lake Worth, you should get a game with them. You should get a game with them. They want some smoke, and they're really good. They got like five Division ones on their team or something. Something nice. crazy. Okay. So, um, he handles the West Palm. So all of us kind of like we work together to try to bring awareness. Everybody wants something from their neighborhood. You know what I mean? Yeah. They, want, they want Broward to shine. You know okay. what I'm saying? Miami to shine. Um, Coach Frank, he wants Franklin. He wants uh, West Palm Beach to shine. Uh, all of us competitive about who's better. Cool. Than we him. need you. We need you, though. We need you. I, I, I'm definitely here. <laughs> Thank you, brother. I appreciate this, man. Yeah. And definitely. I'm definitely for you. I'm definitely. I know we're supposed to do an All Star game when doing the crop last year, 
But yeah. I'm definitely looking to try to do Break more. Back. Yeah. You, did a great job. you did a great job with that top 24 last year. Thank it was an amazing, and it was an amazing event. Mm -hmm. A lot, of, uh, a couple of coaches were here watching. It was, we definitely should do it again, man. And yeah. I wanted to tell you, asked me a question I forgot to answer, man, about our schedule this year. Yeah. yeah. Our, our first game of the season is against Sage Mom. Yeah. Yeah, we, we want to play. We want to play this year. We're ready. And then Woo! our game is a team from North Carolina coming in, Westland. They're pretty good. Our third game is Northwestern. We heard Northwestern is back, so we want to try. We want to try to see. Coaches, coach does a great job over there, and, yeah. and we're excited to have that game. And mm -hmm. it's a, it's a, it's a good um, rivalry, man. From back in the days, Miami High Northwestern is OG schools from Miami, man. They, that's another thing. All these original schools should be playing each other, you know. Um, so I try to do it. So we're playing Northwestern right after that. We got, we got Norland, you know. Oh. So we got smoke right away. Yeah, yeah, we're ready, man. We're ready. We're ready. We we're playing some good teams. We're playing, like I told you, we're playing. Uh, uh, and then in our holiday tournament, we're playing some good teams. Uh, the rivalry against Gables is always going to be fun. Um, it's gonna be a play, yeah, Belen, Belen is a good team. They're former state champs. Um, who else? Um, uh, I mean. Palmetto, Palmetto's uh, former district champs. We're excited to play that. Okay. And um, who else? Uh, I mean, I'm thinking, trying to think off my head here. Uh, hold up. Let me see. Um, you can pull it up. You got I'm time. To now, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to look at it now. Uh, Doral Academy. They're, they're decent. And uh, oh, Matter Lakes. Matter Lakes is a good team. They're former state champs. So we play three former state champs, man. So uh, and then we go to Naples and uh, we play a little bit over there in Naples. Uh, mm -hmm. Lehigh High School, they always have some pretty good teams from that West Coast, Fort Myers area, you know. And um, what's your um, prediction for your record this year? Ah, oh, man. Uh, uh, We're going to win every game, man. <laughs> game i don't know i'm thinking my first you no know, we have our preseason too we host bob carella we call it the bob carella you remember bob rest in peace mm -hmm. uh bob was a big time miami high guy man and and we uh, lost him and and you know doing that the little thing i could do and i, I invited i invite his daughter all the time over for the bob carella classic and preseason and um and we uh we play two games man and we're playing against uh miami christian and schoolhouse prep so it's good warm-up games, and then after that, uh, we're on to the races with the first game of the season being at Sagemont at Sagemont for their for their Thanksgiving Classic. So we we're 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 ready to work. We're ready to work this year, man. Well, I want to say thank you, man, for coming on and, and and talking about your program and high school basketball in general, man. Always been a friend of mine. Uh, always doing a good job and a good deed to the community, man. I want to say thank you. For real, man. I appreciate you, man. Thank you for having me here, of course, man. I want to also say all the coaches that are on here, man, reg regardless, nothing is ever personal. Um, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's coaching life. It's about the kids. If you're not about the kids, I probably don't say what's up to you, man. And mm -hmm. I know where you're working. I know what you're doing for these kids. Um, exactly. It's, it's it's sometimes it's disgusting what I see these young young coaches uh, trying to get something out of it themselves, um, and it's we're fortunate enough to have somebody like you that you ain't getting money off of this. You're trying to promote kids, trying to get them to college. We need people like you. We need more. I know you don't want to have uh, uh, rivals, but I think we need more. And um, I appreciate everything you do. I appreciate everything. Uh, uh, all the co all the coaches you've had on this podcast, and I hope a million dollars of success, man, a million moments of success. Yeah. And uh, this is only the beginning for you, brother. And uh, from where we started, both of us as little young assistant coaches just trying to get our, our foot in the door. Mm -hmm. um, here you are on a podcast interviewing me. And there's a lot of guys you probably feel that way with. And um, I think sky's the limit, man. This year is going to be a special year. Um, it was a special moment through through part uh, through our uh, um, uh, COVID. Um, what you did, uh, I won't forget it. At. Also, I know you were heavily involved helping us through COVID. Um, I had a baby through COVID, and um, it was life life changing. 
and um, look at us now. Look at how we've moved on, and and let's not let's not forget that. You know what I mean? And I appreciate again, yeah. Sean, for the yeah. man. I appreciate you, Jacob. Yeah. I'm here, brother. Thank you, brother. I'm gonna talk to you soon. I appreciate the interview. Um, good luck this season, my brother. I love you. Thank you, bro. Love you. See you later, man. Thank you. Bye, brother. All right.